Hello and welcome back to the channel. If I do look slightly dishevelled today, it's because I've been out chopping a tree down this morning. So if there's sawdust in my hair, please forgive me. So today we're having a look at the first of the Sony Clear range, bringing innovation to palm right from the word go with this the S300 Sony Clear. It was released in the second half of 2000 and was the beginning of a long list of Sony Clears that would be produced over the next five years, slightly longer in the Japanese market. Sony were highly innovative in what they did, taking what was essentially an operating system for a text-based organizational device and turning it into a full multimedia device with vivid high-definition screens, MP3 and MPEG playback, and even built-in cameras. And while Palm would eventually arrive at similar solutions, Sony certainly pushed the boundaries of what could be done. Before we jump in, I'd like to give a shout out to my newest member, Science Apps, who unsurprisingly from his thumbnail has got quite a few videos that are Palm related. I'll pop a link below, feel free to go check those out. This brings channel membership up to 10, of which I'm very pleased. So a massive thanks to everyone who is supporting the channel through membership. And from next month, as a bit of a reward for being a member, you'll get to see my videos first. So let's take a look at the box. So let's take a look at what we get. First of all, from the outside, we can see that we're going to get a lot of easy organization for my appointments, phone numbers, memos, to-do items, digital photos, and movies. So this is new to Palm OS at this point with an easy to use jog dial. So a new feature from Sony and it's trademarked. So although there are similar items on other palm tops from the time, including the E15 from Casio, which has an up down switch, it's not a dial, so it doesn't spin all the way around. And so the jog dial is trademarked by Sony. We get the same thing, but in German, and then we get unlimited storage. I mean, that is quite a claim. They do include a memory stick in here, which is eight meg, but I don't think that eight meg could be classed as unlimited storage. Finally, we get stylish, sleek design, ultra slim and light. The Sony handheld with Palm OS software slips easily into your pocket to take anywhere you go. And to a large part, that is true. This is quite an interesting piece of design from Sony, and it's certainly different from what we've seen with Palm and Handspring up to this point. Looking on the bottom, it's got a load of blah about trademarks, blah, blah, blah. Underneath, we get this nice diagram and you can see the cradle is actually quite stylish. It kind of fits in with that angular design process going on with the CLIA itself. We've got infrared, backlight, datebook, memo pad, to-do list, enhanced address book, and we'll look at that shortly, and the memory stick slot. Here it tells us that we're running Palm OS 3.5 and that we're gonna have simple data entry. Flipping it over to the back, we've just got a picture down this side we've got another image with the package content so we do get a sony handheld with 8 meg of internal memory we've got an 8 megabyte memory stick so that's 16 meg altogether which is quite impressive for the time palm desktop software sony original software usb hotsync cradle ac adapter stylus manuals and a protective carrying case flipping over to the other side and we've got the product information again, telling us about the backlit screen and the lithium ion battery. And down at the bottom, we've got our minimum requirements. These are the applications included, a list of which we'll look at shortly. So let's open up this box and take a look. So there's a nice graffiti reference guide, very handy. We've got our personal entertainment organizer operating instructions. And that of course is in English and what appears to be German, but we don't need a manual because we all know how to use one of these. We've got an accessory guide. Let's see what accessories we can get. Don't wait in line, order direct online. Um, I don't think that's gonna work anymore as this is 20 odd years out of date. So we'll skip that. 
Maximize your portable potential. Well, that certainly sounds exciting. So spare styluses, oh, in various colors, that's nice. Um, connectors for traveling, and new cradles should you need one. Memory sticks, of course. And then look, we could get a memory stick camera, a memory stick GPS module, I've never seen one of those, and a memory stick fingerprint recognition module. Look at that, never seen one of those. If any of you have one of these, pop a comment below. I'd love to know whether they really existed and how well they worked. So what else have we got? Oh, memory stick to PC MCIA card slot. Uh, I actually have one of those that was donated to me. So that's very good. Um, and this appears to be a memory stick to mini disc adapter. Again, if you've ever seen one of these, let me know. I didn't know such a thing existed. If I'm wrong and it's something completely different, also let me know as I won't look for one then. And you can buy a mouse with a built-in memory stick reader. Doesn't that look cool? I don't imagine the back of your palms going to be very comfortable with that sticking out. But um, yeah, interesting idea. Memory stick Walkman, Dictaphone, Headphones. Ah uh, yes, of course, Sony did a huge range of uh, digital imaging cameras. So a large part of these don't really apply to the device we've got. But some exciting items in there nonetheless getting started oh we've got various languages now not just english and german so that all looks very exciting a guarantee i suspect that's out of date end user software license agreement i mean who's ever read one of these safety regulations do you think it just tells us not to stick it in water Oh, and finally, I've got this, which appears to be a correction to the supplied operating instructions. So that's great. You'll notice I don't actually have a CD for this, but that's OK, because if you go to sonyclear.org, you can download all the discs, which is what I have done for this model. Opening up this piece of board. Here we go. So I imagine it was slightly better packed when it was original. But here we've got the case. So it's got a Velcro fastening at the back and it just slides down into the case. This is the power adapter. So it's not a generic five volt adapter with a pin into the slot. Instead, it goes straight to the connector board. So it's uh, not easy to replace should it get broken, but that's the power adapter. This is the cradle. So the cradle is quite quirky. I like the angular design. And when on the desk, it is quite balanced. It's got a couple of rubber feet, stop it sliding around. And on the back, that's the connector board. So you can plug your adapter straight into that. Like so. And then to release it, it's got a couple of clips on either side. This has got USB connectivity, which was starting to become the norm rather than serial. And finally, we have the unit itself, a purple and silver piece of sculpted plastic. So here it is in the Sony branded case that comes with it. Unfortunately, there's no uh, belt loop. It's um, attached under there, so you can't slide a belt through. Um, so you can't wear it like a holster like those phones in the 2000s. If you open it up, you get easy access to all the buttons, the jog dial, the silo, infrared and of course the memory stick on top so it's actually a very good case it feels very protective and it's quite grippy so it'll stay firm in your hand if we take it out on the front we've got a 160 160 display we've got the usual buttons for going to the home screen the menu calculator a search function down in the bottom left we've got the contrast button this is your graffiti area with a pop-up keyboard for letters and numbers on this side underneath we've got the connector for the cradle on this side we've got a lanyard connector and access to this stylus it's worth noting that the stylus is metal and it has the usual reset pin in the top of the stylus it's quite a nice weight and it's pretty nice to use. Flipping over onto the back, we've got a battery panel. Do not be fooled. If we take this panel off, what you'll see is a little bit like on the SJ35. While there is a battery panel, it doesn't make changing the battery particularly easy. Sorry. There we go. There's the battery slightly swollen, so I will be 
needing to change that at some point and of course because it's swamp doesn't hold much charge but if you do wriggle the battery out what you'll find is the power leads actually run under there and they connect up in the main body so regardless of the fact that there is a panel to apparently get to the battery you can't change the battery without dismantling the device i'm not sure who designed this but it doesn't make sense to even have the panel. It's also worth noting in terms of batteries, it's not as easy to get a replacement battery for this as it is for some of the palm unit. And that I assume is because not quite as many of them were made. Moving on up at the top, as we've already said, we've got infrared, we've got the slot for the memory card, and of course we've got the power button. So let's power it on. So we've got the usual palm intro screen. I'll just set it all up. And we're in. In terms of size, it's quite similar to the Palm 5. If we pop it on top, you'll see the Palm 5 is slightly wider. They're both the same height. There's no difference in that at all. And in terms of thickness, the Sony is just marginally thicker. So it's still a good size to pop in your pocket and carry around. So I'm just gonna beam benchmark over so we can run a benchmark on its CPU. It has the same 16 megahertz CPU that we see in the Series 5. Let's run a benchmark. So this unit is coming out as slightly faster than the Palm XE and the Palm 5, but not quite as fast as the 5X. But since we're here, why don't we actually see how the 5X does? So this is my slightly modified 5X, which has got a light on it and we actually see the same speed pop out. Even though the Sony Clear only has a 16 megahertz CPU, which should make it the same as the Palm 5, it actually comes out at the same speed as the Palm 5X with its snappier 20 megahertz CPU. And since we're running benchmarks, here's my M500 for comparison at 128%. So it's not surprising that this feels a lot more snappy when doing most tasks. That said, the Clio certainly hits above its spec. Unlike the Palm 5, the backlight on the Sony is not inverted. It is just a standard backlight. And so you can see it seems quite a lot brighter because of that. I'll just pop the lights down. So me personally, if I'm reading or using the Palm 5 at night, I actually prefer an inverted backlight. But in terms of brightness and contrast, the standard backlight is better, so I appreciate why some people prefer it. The color choice on this is interesting. Going for a purple and silver design is quite quirky, but I don't think it's a bad choice overall, given that at the time most devices came in either blue, silver or black. So let's boot the computer. Since I don't actually have a CD for this uh, particular device, I've put all the files onto a compact flash card and they'll simply go in the PC card slot. This is the easiest way of transferring files unless we use a USB stick. What a great start of sound. Okay, we don't need to do the uh, welcome screen. We'll revisit that when we revisit this computer in a future video. So for now, let's go and have a look at what software we've got. Here are all the files. So let's hit setup and see what we've got. So we've got install Palm Desktop, Picture Gear, Avant Go, that obviously won't work anymore, TrueSync, and uh, install Acrobat Reader. So we're gonna install Palm Desktop for Sony. And we're not going to configure any mail. And we're not going to actually register. So let's just carry on. Perfect. Next up, we want to install Picture Gear Lite. No, we don't need to do that. And we better install QuickTime as we don't have QuickTime on here because it's a clean install of 98. And no, we don't need to do any of that nonsense. Back to the menu, that should be all we need. So we'll come out of here. So let's plug it in. Now that's plugged in, let's see if it's worked. Looking good. And that certainly sounds promising. So yes, that's us. 
excellent that's all working so let's add a couple of things so that we can sync it so we'll put in some diary events we'll add a couple of addresses perfect and we'll put in a couple of to do so it looks like i already have done we'll just leave those as they are now we could do with installing some apps we want picture gear light all right so there's some uh, samples in here quite a few so we might as well transfer those to the device let's install a penguin actually let's see if we can install multiple so we'll do a penguin kangaroo Go file install you in the next hot sink. So let's select a video, we'll install it to the handheld during the next hot sink. Excellent. I've got some photos that I took on my phone, which are just wonderful. So we'll just see if we can't put one of those across. Yes, I want that one. Let's just have a quick look at the still settings. So we can set to 160, 160. Let's leave them at that actually, because frankly, they're not much bigger anyway. Now we've selected a whole bunch of stuff. Let's do a quick hot sync and see what that all looks like. So let's start with the jog down first of all. So if I give it a quick flick, you'll see everything in this list pops up and then scrolling down and pressing in, we'll select whichever one you've chosen. Within memos, you can use the jog dial to scroll down and again, you can select your particular memo and then scrolling will take you to the next memo or scroll down through the memo you're currently in. The same happens with to do, you can select different ones, pressing in, doesn't actually do anything, but you can scroll down to each one to select it. In the address book, as you can imagine, you can simply one-handedly scroll down to the one you want and press it in to select that contact. Scrolling on here will take you through to the next one and the next one after that and so on and so forth. In date book, the jog dial takes you through each day rather than up and down the day itself. Pressing enter will change modes in the same way that repeatedly pressing the calendar button will change modes. So the drag down really helps with one handed operation, but mainly if you right handed, as I imagine using it in your right hand and trying to scroll it with your finger is very difficult. So rather than looking at all the apps on here, as we've done that on the series five in the past and on a couple of other devices, instead, we're going to focus on the amendments that Sony have made. So the first one we've already actually seen, and that is in the address book, it's possible to add pictures. So here's a Harry Potter photo. So that's from the cover of the Philosopher's Stone. As you can see, it looked pretty terrible. There are two reasons for that. One is it's only in four greys. And the other issue is that I took this photo photo on my Nokia 110. Anyway, moving on. Here's a nice picture of me also taken on my Nokia. It looks a little bit better because there wasn't quite as much going on in the image. Um, I am not, of course, James T. Kirk. More is the pity. So the ability to add photos to your contacts would later arrive in Palm OS, but for the moment, it's Sony's own treat. So next up on amendments, we've got this. So this is G Media or generic media. As you'll see so on here here's the video i pre-installed we've got a couple of options down the bottom so this tells us that it's a video if we click the next one it tells us the size of the video a crazy 120 by 92 pixels i mean search quality this shows the length of the file and finally we've got the actual size so it takes up 104.5k so that doesn't sound like a lot but when you've only got 8 meg altogether, 100k is quite a bit, especially as it's only a little over 8 seconds long. Nevertheless, let's have a look at it. So I think you'll agree this isn't great quality. More importantly, perhaps, is there's no sound. And of course there's no sound because this has got a piezoelectric speaker. It's not possible to add real sounds. Given the time that this was released, if you wanted to watch video on a handheld, you'd be much better off with the Casio E115, which came with video software included, and I'll put a link to that here. If we hit menu, there's only an about, and so the G stands for generic media. So as you can see, this is a grayscale screen, and it'll show up to four shades of gray, 
already putting it a bit behind some of the other contenders, such as this. The E15 from Casio. This is monochrome. It's the last of the monochrome devices released by Casio, but it can display 16 shades of grey, unlike the four on here. That said, according to Wikipedia, there is a colour version of this. Now, I have only ever seen one image of it and it looked a bit photoshopped. So if you've got the colour version of this, let me know by popping a comment below because I've never seen one. I can't find a reliable source of one other than a quick mention on Wiki, so I am curious as to whether it actually exists. If you are enjoying this video, a like and a subscribe would be excellent. We passed 3,000 subscribers last month, and I'm hoping to rattle my way towards 4,000 by the end of the year. A big ask considering how niche this channel is. If you're really enjoying this video, why don't you consider becoming a member? It's only $1 a month, and you would directly be helping fund this channel so that I can buy new batteries for Sony Clies, new devices like the Anstrad pen pad, and all the bits and pieces that help make these videos possible. In addition, you'll get one of these lovely stickers, and from next month, you'll get to see videos early. But regardless of whether you're a member, a subscriber, or just watching this random video that's popped up in your YouTube feed, I thank you for watching. Next up on our list, we have Memory Stick Gate. So this allows you to move files back and forth between the memory stick. You can't launch any files from the memory stick in this current OS, but it's still useful to be able to store additional programs. So you might store them on your memory card and then simply move them across when you need them. So this all works very simply. You can swap between what's on the memory card and what's on the internal storage. And of course you can select all, clear all, copy, move, delete. And up here, you can do the same as you can do down here, swapping between the two. If I hit menu, you can see again, we've got these options, select all, clear all, move to memory stick, copy to memory stick, delete from internal. And over here, we've got format, which allows you obviously to format the memory card, preferences, and about memory stick gaze. Under preferences, we don't actually have a lot going on. So we've got a working directory in the memory stick and you'll see there are two others and that's for storage of pictures and of course for videos under G Media. Next up on the Sony software, we've got memory stick auto run. What this allows you to do is to select a file in the memory stick, I haven't got any in there at the moment, and that file will automatically be installed to RAM and run when the memory stick is put in. So again, this could be useful, for example, you might have a memory stick that you store all your Game Boy ROMs on and your Game Boy emulator. So when you put that in, it'll automatically install and launch the Game Boy emulator. Hitting menu, we've got a log. Obviously, there's not a lot there. It just tells us when the memory stick went in and that it couldn't find any auto run settings because I hadn't set any. We've got tools, which apparently shows us nothing. So I'm not sure why that exists. And then we've got preferences. And of course, this allows you to disable the auto run or enable it. And finally, we've got an about. So this is the 1.1 version. It'll actually be the first version because of course, this is the first clear that they've launched. So next look, let's look at PG Pocket. So this is the image application. So as you can see, I've loaded those images in over Hotsync on my Armada 300. And we've got a few pictures. So we've already seen this glorious photo of myself um, disguised as Captain Kirk apparently um, and we can scroll up and down to move through the images that I've taken. Tapping on the screen takes you back to the main menu and in here we've got a couple of options so we're currently looking in the thumbnail um, section. This shows us the details and under details we can see the date. The date is actually when it was hot synced rather than when the image was taken and of course all those images are modified before they're hot synced across. We can select whether we want to look at the internal images or the external images. There's no external images at the moment and we can use the jog dial to scroll up and down and of course press it in to select any image we want to look at. Again making one-handed operation quite easy. Scrolling will of course take you to the next image and pressing in again on it will take you back to the main menu. So there's a slideshow function, that's what this next button does and as you can see we've got the order of slides here. We can set an interval, I'll put three seconds because it struggles with one. You can select whether you want to loop it whether you want to fade in and out, this is the order they'll come up in and you just press start when you're ready. 
What a beautiful Scion 2. So I'd like to tell you that these images look much better in person and there's some kind of issue with the camera, but there isn't. I spent a lot of time setting this up to give us the absolute best contrast on the camera. So don't expect any miracles in terms of being able to see these better. So I've had enough of that. So next up we can move files. So here we go, we can select our penguin for example, and then we can move it from the internal to the external. You'll notice the categories disappeared and that's because you can only have categories on the internal memory. Hitting OK. And there we go, it's gone. And now if we head over to the memory stick, there's our penguin image. If you don't want to move it, for example, you want to keep a copy on the internal and on the external, you can use the next button and this will do a copy function. It works exactly the same. And finally, you can choose ones to delete. So simply select an image and hit delete. We get a little warning and then it's gone. Obviously, if you delete an image that is part of your address book, you will find that that picture will no longer show. Up at the top, we can also choose categories. As I say, you can filter via those. And if we hit menu, we can choose a font, the usual three palm fonts. There we go. And we can see about, and this is 1.01. .01. So straight out of the gate, the S300 introduces two ish new features to palm os the first and most notable being the jog dial allowing easy one-handed operation as long as you're right-handed in addition it adds the memory card slot which we wouldn't see from palm for another 12 months when it releases the m500 series of course handspring beat sony to the punch when it came to adding memory and also adding other modules interestingly Although this has the same 16 megahertz CPU that we see in the Palm 5, it operates as fast as the Palm 5X, which has a 20 megahertz CPU. Showing once again that Sony are able to push that little bit more performance out of hardware than Palm were achieving. The S300 remains a good choice for a Palm OS device if you're in the market for one, especially if you can get one in good condition like this, which I managed to get for about 24 pounds although often the prices are a bit silly. Just bear in mind, if you are gonna get one of these, you will definitely need a new battery if you want more than 20 minutes life out of it. If you're not wanting to mess about replacing batteries, then a Palm 3 or a handspring visor might be the better option for you. For those of you who've been watching my ditching a smartphone videos, you'll know I've been working with the Nokia 110. The poll went up last week and it's quite clear from the numbers that nobody's particularly interested in seeing the Optimus 2 as an alternative. Although I have to say I'm very excited to try it. So there will be a video coming on this at some point. In the meantime, I am just waiting till the beginning of May when the new version of the Nokia 2720 is released and I'm going to buy that as my prize primary phone. I'm planning on scheduling a live stream for the three month mark so keep an eye on the community page so you don't miss it. If you've enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe. If you are wanting to disappear down the Sony Clear rabbit hole why don't you check out this video with Sony's last black and white Sony Clear or this video with the T35. As always my name's Hugh this is Handheld Computing thanks for watching.